All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank, thank you for having me here today. So you're going to get a different perspective. As I said. So what I'm talking today is going to be about internal developers. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek in what we're doing at Ford. So most of the items out there is on external airport portals, and people talk to ad nauseum. So um, I think the my, my experience has been internal developer portals are much, much more difficult than, than the external ones. And you'll go for the reasons why. So this is our approach. So it's a platform enablement is a new new group at Ford. We've been around about six months, and um, our goal is around developers. Yeah. Question: is, Why Ford? I said, you know, most people don't go Ford. We're an automotive company. Most people may not be realized. So back in 2016, we established another company called Ford Smart Mobility. Okay, and this is a subsidiary of Ford. We are a software company. Our mission is design, build, grow, and invest in new mobility services. So just like any other company, software company, we're, we're trying to actually get forward in the 21st century part of software for our digital products and services. So mobility. These are just some of the, the press items that are on there that are going on right now, and I can fill up pages of this with going on mobility. Things such as Go Ride. We have it there for medical transport for, for seniors to get them to doctors. There's apps, there's experience around it. Uh, agreements with data sharing, so a lot about autonomous vehicle with Uber, Lyft, and other companies about sharing data on the platforms actually to make autonomous vehicles real. Uh, scooter company, though, you know, we own scooter company, okay, for last mile. That last mile is very, very important. Delivering goods and services, Walmart, Domino's, other companies, so we've had different things in site actually, delivery of products, you know, to be able to do that, and the APIs and the services to make that happen. Okay, we bought companies. Autonomic is one like that. And Autonomic is building our what we call our transportation mobility cloud, which will not only serve us, but it's open to third parties as well as cities and other organizations that actually allow them to, you know, to take advantage of the platform that we're building. Insurance, driver score. We actually have apps for driver score to actually be at driver's based insurance. We have another subsidiary of Ford called Ford Credit, which is a bank and does insurance and other things. So enabling that other portion of the company. So. Answer the question is yes, we are an API driven company. This just gives you an idea of the types of APIs that we have in place today that we're building, we're building out, and building on to be able to, be able to do this. So, uh, quite a bit is in the works with, with, um, with the company as we move forward. So, part of this stuff, as I said, I, you know, I've been a lifer in the auto industry. Like I said, I started back in 81 actually with General Motors right out of college. Or actually, starting college, General Motors actually run their own college for engineers. And I actually went through that program. So this is a perspective for someone who's, who's been in almost 40 years in the industry, you know, and working in global companies. How does it impact our APIs, and specifically doc ops? A lot of things you can get away with in a small company, or small startups, 50 people, 100 people companies. A little bit different when you go to global enterprise. So we have a global footprint, 166,000 people working in plants and offices across the world as well as I call 116 years of technical debt. <laughs> so yes, in many, many ways, whether it's, it's, whether it's IT debt, whether it's processes, whether it's manufacturing, that just doesn't go away just because we, we, we start a company and we're a new company for smart mobility. The debt's still there and we have to deal with it. Alignment requires a lot of effort in a global company. You see this wonderful thing, you know, that hey, there's four logo of employees, Imagine the effort just to get those people to, to get it together, to dress properly. Even then, if you look in the front row, there's two people who didn't kind of follow it. They're wearing white pants. <laughs> okay? So doing these things in a big company, whether it's getting together to do a picture or getting together to do APIs in, in a software business, it's challenging. And you cannot underestimate the amount of effort and work there is to get the line. Really, Global Enterprise, we are really one person, Ford Motor Company, a big person but we're made up of individuals, and you cannot forget that. At the end of the day, everyone is an individual, just like those people in the white pants, they gotta come aboard. Guardrails are in place to protect the company, and so as a, as a company, you know, we're a fortune whatever company that we're on there, so we have these wonderful things put in place to protect the, 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 the company, and for many good reasons. Okay, contracts, you know, architecture, purchasing, open source, you know, I. The companies that can just go out and say, hey, I'm going to go get this open source thing and just bring it in and start using it, not so much. And I said, again, we have to look at it and say, A, is it going to be around? Is it stable? Okay, we worry about indemnification and lots of other things that 
you know, people say, ooh, you're Ford, you're a billion dollar company, you know, you're a good company, go sue, we're gonna, we're gonna come after you. Uh, financial policy, information security, big things, okay? We have APIs for vehicles and whatnot. Security is huge, as well as regulations. The automotive industry is a highly regulated industry. So we have to deal with all those things, our APIs, our developer portals, and everything that goes around with it. Yet we're a new company, mobility, okay? And we're opening up new businesses for Ford, okay? City solutions, ride sharing and whatnot. And a lot of times, those guardrails that were in place to keep you from going off road, we gotta go off road. So our challenge is, is, is working with, with uh, the company and experiences that are in place and systems that are in place, so allowing us to go off road and not to be so painful to be able to go off road. You know, big company, finding content is difficult. Okay, we got lots of stuff. You know, go try to find it. We know, I know it's around there someplace, we've had this up for there. So, uh, and that feels like me sometimes, you know, down in the hole trying to dig, you know, dig all the stuff I've had. You can find it. However, legacy information is not always easily consumable to a big company. These are, you know, the wonderful things they call Moroni labels, or these are the window stickers on the cars, they're more commonly known as. So just because you can find this information doesn't mean you can easily consume it in the company. So we have all this stuff, I say, hey, I found it, whatnot, it's like, oh, it's something from 10 years ago or 15 years ago, or it's an old mainframe protocol or whatever the case may be. So finding it, consuming it, you know, you, you, you get different items you have to deal with and to be aware of. So kind of a little bit, that's us as a corporation, as a big enterprise. So if you've never had the luxury or the experience or the joy of working in a global company, those are a little bit about the environment that I work in every day, and our team works in every day. So we'll ask the question then, well, why are you doing doc ops? Very simple, this is all about our developers. Okay, mobility, we have 2,000 plus developers, software developers in our, in our mobility, uh, for Smart Mobility Organization. They're the largest amount of people in our organization, it's about them. They're creating our products and services for the company that we will monetize, that we will sell, make available to them. Look at data, external data, you know, programmable web, other ones. Yeah. No one in this room, I think, would, would, would say that, you know, it's not important. You know, complete and accurate documentation, most important thing. Well, a peek inside of our internal. This is actually from our internal. Uh, this is one of our recent uh, hackathon that we had. And part of the hackathon was, you know, talking to our developers, find out what do they care about as far as the documentation. Our number one internally, Prerequisites and dependencies. If I consume this API, what am I getting myself into? What is it tied into? And I'll show you why that's important in the big company with 116 years of technical debt. Okay, be able to expose those type of things. I love this slide because at the end of the day, it's content. All this thing we're doing in the developer experience and everything, it's all based on content. You know, Again, I think this group here recognizes that. Uh, but again, it, it, it's what content, how it should be available, all the things that we able to do that. You know, it's kind of funny talking to some of the product managers that, you know, they were going to put down and say, hey, I want to pick a portal, I just want to throw my Swagger document out there. You know, let's go. It's like, they don't get it yet. So there's a large education journey on there to say, hey, you want people to come back, you want to experience on that, you have to look at the content to be able to do with that. And that's what we've been doing with uh, our product managers. Agile, okay. Most of the companies that work with are agile, probably. They're doing some type of agile methodology. Again, we're doing it mobility. And, you know, this is the agile manifesto. However, I always like to put in a reality check about things. Many developers focus on those four items on the left. And honestly, they take license to ignore the items on the right. Okay, which means comprehensive documentation. You know, it suffers. So can you imagine 2,000 different developers, each with their own view of Agile and how it works and what's important and you know, build on that? Yeah, it's a challenge. So this is a change management, the challenge and the thing we're going through to get our developers to say, this is why it's important. Answering the question, the WIFM, what's in it for me if I do this? So our approach to DocOps. 
what are we doing, what have we done, where are we going? Remember, I said this is six months of, of effort, so we have a long way to go. There's a lot of you people out in the audience have been there since a lot longer than me. One, conduct an API scavenger hunt, as I call it. Okay, or another stuff, an as is assessment for our API products. We didn't even know what we had as far as our APIs in the company. You know, as honest as that may sound, or as brutal as that may sound, you know, it's a challenge. Going back to that thing, you know, the big hole, things are buried. You know, where, where are the apps? What's the level of it? What's the protocol? Is there documentation? Is it, is it hosted on an API gateway or not? So that was the first thing. One of the first things we actually did. Understand, what, what's, what's the state of as is? What do we have right now? Exposing our hidden factories. Yeah, I'm a manufacturing guy, so I'm using a lot of manufacturing analogies. Hidden factories are these repair loops, are these hidden things that go on that Reality, you have your formal way it's done, but reality, all these things are going on behind the scenes, and this is what's really happening, okay? And developer is all about being productive and getting their software out and getting it to market and meeting their timings and delivering value. However, they put these workarounds in because they don't have time to worry, worry about it, and if something's not working, they're like, oh, well, we'll do this and come up with another way to do it, and it works for us, okay? Big company, at the end, very efficient and efficient very quickly. So understanding what, again, sometimes they call them these around pain points. They put these workarounds in to eliminate the pain point. Changing your view on what is content. Everything that I've read on the doc ops focuses on one thing, static documentation. Okay, if you're just focusing on static documentation, at least internally, you will fail, and you will fail miserably. Two other types of documentation you have to consider, or contents, I'll call it real time, Okay, to take this road as an example. I'm a driver on the road. Real time, I'm looking at right now, I have my, my speedometer, I'm going so many fast, there's so many RPMs on there. What's going on? Well, in the API world, that's what's going on at this moment with API. Okay, so whether you call it a portal or a, whatever the case may be, you want to be able to do that. A dashboard, developers need to understand what is the current state of their product. Okay, because we do full of DevOps uh, as part of our part of our approach to doing software. And dynamic, dynamic is what are the flows, what are the rates? This road has a typical pattern of traffic and rates and flows. Well, our APIs have that too, usage. Are the peak times during the day? For example, if you actually look when our API is around the locking a vehicle, you know, or remote starting a vehicle. Used a lot more in cold weather than it is in warm weather, and it follows the time zone. So you can actually watch across the comp as, you know, as the at least in the US as it wakes up, or the other parts of the world, you see this pattern of the APIs when they're getting called, heavy times and whatnot. So understand, what are the dynamics behind the API? They change, okay? Those aren't the same. So our approach to content and our portal and everything else is all of this is important, not just the static stuff. Yes, the static stuff, don't get me wrong, the, the swaggers, the postman collections, the other things, you know, very, very important, but just don't focus on that. We exposed our API with meaningful metrics. When we started up, our teams did not know who the customers of their API was, which their accounts, you know, all the stuff I'm talking about, the usage, the amount of error rates, and things like that. One of the first things to do, understand what do we got? This is what we have. Who's using it? How much are they using it? How much reuse has been done? So all the key KPIs that people have talked about, we automated it, exposed it, made it visible to, to the development teams, to developers. So they can actually understand now my gosh, I didn't realize that so many things are, we have particular times of day or particular things that are on there that we can be able to do that. I'll, I'll give you one of our horror stories. We actually had one um, over in China. They had, actually were getting um, 400 errors because when they rolled it out, they actually put a wrong endpoint into it. It was gone over a month. They didn't even realize actually they had, you know, 80% errors on their API because you couldn't find it. So I mean, as soon as you start putting a light in this thing, you're gonna see the good as well as the bad. So working with the teams to actually expose that through these metrics, through these you know, dynamic dashboards or content reports as I call them, you know, it actually helps you very quickly to understand what is reality. Enable self-service API onboarding. This was a very, very pain point for our customers. You know, our developers, I should say. 
it would take, honestly, some of our APIs, no lie, 28 days for a developer to get on board to actually start consuming it. So if we're talking first time to hello world, five minutes, we started out with a month. Okay. No. We're, we're getting better. We're down, we're down to an you know, hour now. But we're still going to get better on that. But again, it's through automation, eliminating pain points, understanding what's going on with that. And the other thing is self-service. Usually a lot of things are forward, it's not self-service. It's like put a ticket in, someone will do it for you, mention a couple days, whatever the SLA is, they'll get back with you. So doing it for yourself, as funny as that may sound, it, it really wasn't a, a concept that a lot of developers had. Actually doing it themselves, it's like, my gosh, you mean I can do this? I'm empowered? I don't have to go through a workflow or process or someone else like that? The answer is yes. So this is a culture and it's still going on with that. As we, you know, and it's scary for people. Where you've been used to having DBAs or other people do something for you, now it's you, your team, your DevOps. It's it's scary to team sometimes. So again, a lot of a lot of work going on helping to change the culture. Provide meaningful developer assistance. So I actually like this. If you've never actually been in a manufacturing plant, this is actually automation for a human to help the human to be more productive. So this particular person, you know, putting uh, you know. Uh, bolts and, and, and torquing them down all day, supporting the neck, supporting their arms and whatnot. Again, so the fatigue. So trying to eliminate the developer fatigue and the things that make them more productive. It doesn't replace them. We're not replacing our developer, we're not be able to do that. But the automation is focused toward these pain points for the developers. What are the things that are truly, you know, causing these productivity things? Example, one of the things we put out in there, something we call Dev Central Station. Again, Part of the stuff is onboarding is not only getting workstation other things, but actually getting an environment. So we actually now can get a developer environment spun up two minutes that will give you your environment, a GitHub instance, a Jenkins build pipeline, and a whole slew of other things built up on their self self just build so they can actually immediately be productive for a class of projects, whether they be mobile apps, whether they be for web-based, or whether they be for web services based like that. Again, same thing with that. A lot of value in that to the developers, understanding what that is, and, and we, do, we only could do that because of yeah, understanding who they are and what their pain points are. So what have we accomplished so far as a company? Developer personas. How many people actually have developer personas for your internal developers? I don't see any hands. Okay, why not? They have a tougher job. In fact, our developers, I said, most of the time they're dealing with there's our internal environments. They're generally pre-prod environments. They're launching the pre-prod environments. You're talking about access control to pre-prod environments. The prod, you know, is, is fine. You all understand prod and the, the change controls and things you need to do around a production environment. But what about all the different QAs or load testing environments or whatever the case may be? How do you do that? What are their needs? Okay. We have lots of people at Ford. You know, we have people we hire from in college anytime as new, new, new graduates. We bring higher people from all over the country. Some of them are experienced developers. They know nothing about Ford and how we do work. Other people, you know, for years, you know, have gotten out of development, but now they're coming back and say, hey, we're a software company now. Software is our product. So yeah, if you have a comp sci degree and you haven't done it in 10 years, welcome back. You know, let's go aboard and, and start learning. So. We have people all over the board where they're at their knowledge, their understanding of software development at this point. You know, modern software development practices. So this is a very key to understand what we put on the portal and our approach toward that. Again, accomplished so far. Oh, sorry, get back there. Pick the REST API standard, as simple as that may be. We picked one. Because, you know, different people wanted to try different things. And then evangelize it. Okay, it's not it's one thing to do it. But again, go back to that big Ford logo in the beginning with all the people on it. How do you get people to come together in a Ford logo? Evangelization, evangelizing, I can't underestimate it enough. It's kind of funny. It's actually Peter Platform. That's our actually our, our internal evangelist for the company. So you'll see him in a lot of different things to be able to do that. So it's, it, and there's a long story about it, but it started as a practical joke and it's become a wonderful thing. <laughs> We launched an MVP developer portal. And I'm not going to talk about that because there's great stuff that, about what should be in an MVP developer portal. Again, I have the luxury and the privilege of standing on the shoulders of giants and people who've done this stuff before me, so I've been able to read 
and understand. But here's just some of the content that's on there. Again, our landing page. What's some of the stuff on our landing page? We have API of the week. We have you know, almost 1,000 APIs. Who knows them? What's going on with them? Who's the team? What's up all down there? So you know, looking at the APIs of the week. Hmm? Access to our metrics. Access to our login tools. Access to our API catalog. Connecting with us. We love communication things at Ford. I have, we have Skype. I have um, Team Connect. I'm sorry, um, Cisco uh, Team, Team Viewer. And um, yeah, well, that's not that. Uh, other things we able to do that. So we just don't have one way of doing it. We have ways to sign up for, you know, I'm going to call them bulk mail, is what they are, but basically sign up to events. Be able to go out to people interested in that. So, for example, our, our main one has over 3,000, about 3,600 people that are signed up for our communications on that. Okay, no, I'm sorry, Slack is the other one. So, Slack, be able to do that. So, we have all of these things. Again, the challenge is some people are only on one, some people are on another, and there's no one on there. So, if you want to reach out to all your developers, you don't say everyone has to get on Slack. I'd love that, but that's not the case. You go meet people where they're at. Okay, don't expect them to come to you. You will fail if you don't. Other things that are important on there, again, getting started. How do I get started? You know, so it's all about the onboarding. Develop. All right, I'm, I'm onboarding, I want that. How do I go further? How do I develop? How do I work on it, get the things doing? Catalog, which I'm going to talk to next, is huge. Okay, and I'll talk about that. An asset community. Asset community is kind of like an, an internal stack exchange. Our developers are actually talking to one another and sharing selves with each other. The problem is with Agile, you get your teams and you got your ceremonies, they're all little teams, and you almost lose the bigger community in that. So yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with Agile for you know, it's good things and it's bad things. So you have to still build the larger team outside of your individual team to be able to do that. You lose that a lot with, with, uh, with the Agile. Creating a unified AP ca API catalog. This is how people discover stuff at the end of the day. Catalog, at least at Ford, is very, very messy. Okay, why? We have to build it on top of large and sometimes a fragmented ecosystem. Go back to all these years of technical debt. So we have multiple API gateways in the company. Okay, internally we use a product, you know, API Connect from IBM. Externally we use Azure, so they're API manager. Okay, we have multiple gateways in Azure. We have in China. We have them here in the U.S. So, where's that API hosted? On what gateway? Good question. Okay, so multiple API gateways, multiple API managers. We have APIs not managed via an API manager. A lot of just here's an endpoint on a, on a server someplace. Come get it, which is great. How do I find out? How do I discover it? Those type of things. So, and then APIs that are buried in legacy applications. Again. It's not like these APIs are new. Maybe the REST base put on there, but you know, as a company, we've been doing APIs for years, you know, with different protocols, different standards. They're still very useful, just not very discoverable. Ford has a very, I'm going to call it, um, word of mouth culture. You need to talk to someone to find out where it's on there. Go talk to Joe or Mary or Frank. They'll tell you how it works and where it's at. Okay, which is great. You know, we like collaboration, but it doesn't scale. Okay, so the documentation becomes so much more important now because we've got to be able to scale. Okay, and the analogy I make my team is, it's like, you've used Google Maps. It's like, what if we had to Google, had to talk to every developer that wanted to consume their Google Maps API? You think that would work? You know, it may be extreme, but that's reality for some of the teams today. It's like, you've got to, why, how can Google do that? Onboarding automated, great documentation, you know, the contestant and whatnot, I said, that's what we need to have for your team's APIs. So by doing that, you know, we're able to actually take them through the journey. It's like, and the light goes on for people. I understand. I get it. We created API one pager to help API discovery, and I'll go into this important. Um, why is this important in a large company? Internal developers have a greater content needs vis-a-vis -vis external developers. What's important on these type of things? I just call out different things that are on here. Adoption. Who's using it? Okay. What are the number of calls? How much bandwidth? You know, on there. Okay. Remember, going back the, to the, our developer survey, what was the most important thing? What are the prerequisites and dependencies? Okay. Upstream to downstream. We can talk about microservices all we want. 
okay, which are great and new stuff we're building are microservice based, self-contained, but we don't throw away other things that actually work. Again, this one, this particular API is our vehicle recall. It's a global system. It's how we feed the government when there's recalls for vehicles and whatnot. It's a mainframe based system. It's been around for a long time. It works. It works well. However, okay, it's gone through many, many years of history. You know, there's technical debt and things based up around that. Internal contacts are very important. Who are they? Who's the product manager? Who's the owner? We got lots of them. Okay. What are the key artifacts related to that? What do you have available on there to help me consume it, make it easy, easily consumable? Okay. What are the known limitations? Okay. You wouldn't put this out on your external developer portal. It's like, yeah, this thing is down. You know, it has you know maintenance window of a couple hours and whatnot. But we, we got a cache in there, so don't worry about it. You know, it's hidden from that. The reality is. People need to know that. You know, this one, whether it's ge geographical, where's it at? We're a global company. Is it launched global? Is it just in the US? Is it in China? Is it in Europe? What country's in Europe? So all these things are real important because as soon as you adopt the APIs into your product, you now have a relationship with another product team in the company. Okay? And that's why this is very important, understanding dependencies, understanding prerequisites and whatnot. Automate, hooked API publishing in the CI/CD pipeline. Okay, again, we have Jenkins, you know, our, our pipeline on there. We have all these different gateways. You'd have to go to each gateway to publish the API. Not the most efficient thing to do. Why not write an API that calls the APIs on the gateways and automate it? That's what we did. Okay, made it available, publicized it, again on there. So we've gone from. Adoption from when we started from less than 10, almost about 50 different teams now automating the publisher on that. Which is good because that allows publishing to the catalog and other things. So any of the artifacts that they're doing, again, when we call them publishing, whether you're moving it from one environment, if you're publishing them into a lower environment or production environment, again, that's important because not all environments are at the same level for various reasons. Thank you. Automate, implement an API linter on our CI CD pipeline. Again, it's real important. Open API plus our style guide. How long, are we, how long are we doing? It's our report card. Again, it's not, we're not governance, it's saying you're bad and whatnot, but it's like the community to police themselves. Visual factory, this is again a, a manufacturing thing. A visual factory is, is, is enable a public visualization, <coughs> excuse me, a vital product activity, services, and performance. So these radiators, you know, out there, again, have different content on it static, dynamic, real time. Okay, about their, their products, about their performance and whatnot. Having those things available are very, very important to the development teams. Hire the content strategists and tech writers. You know, I had to do with that. <coughs> we have these three well-defined job families. You know, but however, tech writer, at least right now, is a round peg in a square hole. Not quite yet. We're getting, we're getting their maturity, getting it into there, but <coughs> in software, We've never really done tech writing for internal stuff. We've done for our real product, owner's manuals and other types of things, but not for software. Hackathons, okay, this is all about evangelization. Use hackathons to develop gather feedback, not only in the APIs, your products, the contents you're doing with that. <coughs> and this is one we just had recently in Ann Arbor with our Ford Labs. This is all about evangelization. Get to know who you get better and better understanding of your developers. So what have we learned? These are transformational changes. Change management is key. And it's hard, okay? But don't let it stop you, okay? Change only occurs when we work together with the product teams. You just can't say, do this, do this, and do this. It's like, you gotta get in there. You gotta help them push. You gotta help them, you know, make it better. It's a living ecosystem, okay? Our you know, we call our, you know, development environment, everything, it's alive, just like anything else like that. Again, different types of data, static, dynamic, and real time. Just don't focus on the static. Swagger is not enough. Static is not enough for your developers. Humor is a great teacher to change behavior. Okay, when you're telling people they're doing things bad, I can come out and say you're doing it, you know. Next, we have, we have APIs, yes, yeah, so on the first one, that return 200 status code for everything. Mm -hmm. And then in the body of it has you know, all this stuff like that. You know, how do you tell people like what you're doing is silly 
you know, without actually insulting them. Be able to do that. Or, or even up-to-date API documentation. Again, humor is a great way to change behavior. So, and last one. Above all, don't seek perfection. Don't spend too much time searching for the perfect tools because there are none. They change all the time. Get early wins. I can't stress that enough. So we follow the lean startup principles and iterative process willingness experiment. We've been doing this for the last six months. Develop a portal that's changing, we iterate, we get the feedback and whatnot. Don't seek perfection. You know, anyone, I'd love to have one of them today, but the Etzel in Ford is a phenomenal failure because it was predicted to be the perfect product and it failed miserably in the market. Don't try to do it. So work with your developers and you'll find out you have a much, much better experience. So that's been our experience. We've still got a ways to go, but you can get an idea where we're trying to build up this development community internally. Okay.